So today in the shop, we got a 2013 Volvo XC60. This vehicle needs rear brakes and it has electronic park brakes. So I went to hook up my scan tool and my VCI didn't power up. I noticed there was no uh, green light on it saying that the, there's power to it and there's no communication to it. So, so it came in for a simple rear brake job and turned into a no communication diagnostics. So I'm going to walk you through my steps of figuring this one out. So I hooked up the scan tool like I, sh I was telling you and, uh, and confirmed that there's no communication with the uh, vehicle. Just to make sure I hooked the scan tool up to another vehicle and it had no problems communicating. So I knew that it was the vehicle that was causing this problem. So my next step is I decided to check some fuses. So with my power probe, I checked all the fuses and I came across one fuse that had something funny going on. So when I stuck the tip on the one side of the fuse, I got a battery voltage. On the opposite side, it gave me a ground signal. So that's telling me that this circuit is shorted out. So on one side, we got power battery voltage. The other side is going to ground. So I pulled the fuse out and sure enough, the fuse is blown. You probably can't see it because of the glare of the uh, camera light, but the fuse is blown. So I printed up a wiring diagram and I figured out what that fuse was. And sure enough, it went from the uh, data link connector. First thing I did was on this side of the fuse where we had power, I knew it wasn't uh, a problem with this circuit board here because the number 14 fuse and all these other fuses were powered up fine. I had no issues with it. I knew it was on the opposite side of the, uh, the circuit or on the opposite side of the fuse here. So I traced it down. And we go down here to the bottom here following this red line. We come over and it went to the uh, siren on the alarm system here. So I had to do some digging to figure out where the siren was located on the vehicle. In my service information, it didn't give me any uh, locations. I had to search the internet and I finally found somebody that said it was underneath the, uh, the wheel well here. So I took the inner splash shield of the wheel well apart. And at the very top here is the siren for the uh, vehicle here and sure enough the wire colors match the uh, wiring diagram so i know this is the uh, the part here i checked the uh, the the grommet here making sure that none of the wires were chafing or anything everything looked to be in intact and uh, no signs of an, an issue so i wanted to find out if it's the wiring was shorted or the siren that was shorted so i had to unbolt it there was a couple screws on the back side and i pulled it down and i unplugged it to unplug it was kind of a, a, a chore as well so i had to use a pick tool in, inside here to flare this little tab open so it was, it's in there like this it was like nearly impossible to pull it out now I'm going to test this red wire that had the uh, was blowing the fuse here or short it to ground. I'm going to check it to see if it's uh, ground grounded. And the way I'm going to do that is use the negative lead and hook it to the positive terminal of the battery. And then take the positive lead and I'm going to ground it onto the metal uh, casing of the engine. And sure enough, I got a, I got a reading. It's in negative because I got the leads backwards. So what I want to do is hook this up to the red terminal on the uh, on the wire here. And if I with it unplugged, if it's if I plug it in here, back probe it in here, and I get a reading of the, uh, the battery voltage, then I know that the wire itself is shorted to ground. So I back probed the terminal. I didn't go through the front side. I didn't want to flare it out. And sure enough, I have no reading on my, uh, my voltmeter here, indicating that this wire is not grounded. So it's not completing the circuit. So now I know that the wire is not grounded. So what I'm going to do is plug the siren back in and do the same thing with the back probe. And sure enough, I got a reading. So now I know the siren is causing the, uh, the grounding. So it's internally shorted. And it's so while the siren was unplugged, I also put the blown fuse back into the uh, fuse board here. And what I did was I, uh, back, I probed it here. On the one side, I got a battery voltage. On the opposite side, it was open. I had no, no circuit completion of any type. So I knew that this fuse is still blown, but I, now I know that this circuit is not grounded, grounded through the whole circuit into the uh, fuse board or anything like that. I know that this side of the circuit is good. It's not grounded. The wiring is not the issue. So now I installed a new fuse and I heard my uh, VCI power up. I heard it beep over there. And sure enough, I came over and the light was powered up. Now, meanwhile, the alarm, the, uh, the siren is still unplugged, but I get, now I'm gonna check my scan tool to see if I can communicate with the car and see if I can get the brakes into service mode so I can service the brakes. And while I'm servicing the brakes, I'm gonna have my salesperson uh, contact a dealer, locate the siren, get the part coming, you know, sell it to the customer, tell them our findings. But meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and service the brakes like we had originally planned. So now I'm using the scan tool to put it in service mode. And um, 
basically you just enter the VIN number in, you go to manufacturer, manufacturer specific, and then you go to hop function on the scan tool. This is the all tail, and uh, it has a, what they call a hop function. You can go to the park brake, you click on the park brake, and it'll, it'll have a little section here where you can put it into service mode so you can service the rear, rear brakes. So what that does is retract the, the caliper or the park brakes back into the caliper so you can so you can depress the caliper so you can service the vehicle. So sure enough, as I uh, load it up here, I push the button and then as, as I push the button, you can hear the motor draw on the park brake back in. So while servicing the brakes, we called the customer and the customer just had the vehicle at the dealership. So he wanted to call the dealership to figure out why they didn't uh, tell him about this problem. And the dealership told the customer that we don't know what we're talking about. And because we're an independent automotive shop, we don't know how to diagnose vehicles of this caliper and that only the dealership knows how to do it. And they don't think that our diagnostic was correct and they don't believe that this was the problem causing it to not communicate with the car. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this all back together. I'm gonna put the blown fuse back in there. I'm gonna put the siren back in there, button it back up. We're gonna charge a customer for our diag and we're gonna charge the customer for our service work. And then he, he's gonna go back to the dealership and they're gonna have to pay to have it diagnosed by the dealership. So I guess that service rider was very convincing that they're, they're a better place to take their car. So they're gonna take the car back and have them diagnose the problem. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this, so leave a comment below. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.